Hello everyone and welcome back to Seek and Destroy Collects Ghost Rider right here on the highway to hell and we are going to look at 1993 to 1994's comics for Ghost Rider which there are a ton. Uh, this stack actually is pretty close to the one we did in the last episode so again I'll try to speed through some of these so we can keep it at the you know half hour marker but there is a lot to go through and uh, some of these stories I remember uh, fairly well because I kind of flipped through them recently uh, but I didn't really read them I was just kind of like admiring the artwork and checking out some of uh you know key scenes that I was looking for so some of this might pop in my head of uh, you know remembering but for the most part I might just like speed through these uh, because there's a lot to cover and the main thing you know we have here is more Midnight Suns Unlimited obviously and then we have uh, the Spirits of Vengeance series continuing and those are going to be our first book so we're going to go through this stack here and this one but before we get into it I do want to give away a digital code to the latest issue of Ghost Rider featuring Dan Ketch. I have a couple extra codes, and so as you know, we gave away a code in the last episode, and I wanna give away another one, and we have two more after this. So the next two episodes, no matter what the topics are, we're gonna give out digital codes for Ghost Rider number one. So uh, thank you guys, and first person to get that code, let me know down below, cause it's only a one-time thing, but if you miss your chance on this episode, stay subscribed so you don't miss out on the next episode when we give away another code. Uh, but if you get the code, let me know what your review is of Ghost Rider number one down below. All right, without further ado, let's dive back into these. And I'm sorry, there may be some cuts uh, from time to time. Um, I was feeling better, and then I had like a relapse uh, last night. And uh, I've been working myself to death all weekend at work. Uh, we've been pushing in some long days. Uh, we had the big Star Wars release and stuff, so I've been really tired. So now that all that's done, I get a day off, and I wanted to talk comic books with you guys, but I might be a little low on energy. So I'll do my best to get through these uh, with high energy. So let's start over here. This is the second part of the Carnival of Death. I told you about the Carnival, uh, which in introduced our character Vengeance here and he's like a, you know another Ghost Rider type character but he's big like the Hulk um, I think Bertolucci or Bertinelli or you know, maybe I, I might be confusing his last name with Huntress's last name uh, but uh, he's the main you know he's the character who becomes Vengeance and he comes in and he sent uh, I think he sent from Mephisto uh, but he does I think he comes from hell I can't remember his full backstory maybe one of you guys can remind me down below because uh, I just when I think of these characters, I think of the look of them. And Dan Ketch, I know his backstory, but some of these other characters, I just remember loving their looks, their designs, but never really, uh, you know, remembering too well their backstory. So that's why I'm not doing in-depth discussions of these. I would say if you want in-depth discussions of anything Ghost Rider, check out the Inner Demons podcast. They're friends of mine, and I'm going to put a link to them in the description box below, like I always do on these collection videos, because if you want to know more, I want you to know more also, and you got to learn it from them. And it's going to probably be some time before I ever get a chance to reread these and do in-depth breakdowns uh, if I ever get a chance. I'll try one day, hopefully, uh, but until then, check them out. For now, we're just going through my collection. So we have Spirits of Vengeance number 10 here, um, and then we have, uh, once again, Ghost Rider Comics, or Marvel Comics presents Ghost Rider teaming up with Typhoid Mary. Uh, there's an Iron Fist story in there as well, um, but Marvel Comics presents was this great side book that, you know, had Ghost Rider in it for a long time. I thought he was only in it for like 30 issues, but it turns out they kept him going. And Wolverine is the story on the other side. So it's like these like anthology books, uh, which was really great because for a dollar fifty, this was always a quarter less than every other comic that was coming out that month. But you got more bang for your buck, I thought, because you get to learn about characters like Typhoid Mary and Iron Fist, which, you know, some of these, you know, characters were my introduction to them was through Marvel Comics Presents. Um, so yeah, we have Ghost Rider there. We have Night Stalkers number seven, and this was uh, you know an issue where Ghost Rider appeared in. So obviously we did the Midnight Suns you know crossover event. Now we're a couple months in, and you know the characters are starting to cross over again. I think the Night Stalkers book. I love Blade. I love those characters uh, and Deacon Frost and stuff. But I think that the sales might have started dropping like really quickly on this and Darkhold and Morbius and some of the other titles that spun out of the Midnight Suns. I don't know why. I mean I I know I had them originally when they came out i don't have them part of my collection anymore because dan ketch isn't in them so i went through and you know got rid of stuff and gave stuff away that didn't have dan in it um and um, i don't know maybe that's why maybe because the stories just didn't stick uh in my head without dan ketch around and that's you know that's a personal preference obviously but i think these books started to dip so they started putting punisher and you know dark hold he was in an issue with ghost rider and now we have you know ghost rider and night stalkers i think again just trying to keep those sales you know, to a, to the expectation, not every book has to sell, you know, half a million copies or anything like that, or, you know, or at that point, I guess maybe, um, or, you know, 50,000 copies or a hundred thousand copies, but you still want the book. Like if you're like, all right, we're putting this much money into it and this is the level rank these characters are. So our expectations are, 
fifty thousand a month. If it doesn't meet those expectations, books go away, you know. And I think nowadays fifty thousand is asking a lot of books because I think most books hover around the ten to twenty thousand range. Um, if they're lucky. Uh, so yeah, anyway, so we have Ghost Rider number 38 here. We have the return of the Scarecrow. And uh, Scarecrow was a villain, not to be mistaken for the Batman villain. Uh, this guy did look like a Scarecrow, though. And he had like this little pitchfork thing uh, that, you know, that you could barrel hay with and stuff. So uh, he he would pop up from time to time. Uh, I never found him very interesting. Uh, they did some cool things with him starting from here and moving forward a little bit. But uh, not, still not a memorable villain to me. I just, just his look. Um, I was, you know, he doesn't do a fear thing like the Batman villain does and I think maybe that's you know what he was missing to separate him he just you know there was something missing from him um, I can't put my finger on it maybe one of you guys will have an opinion on that but he just never stuck in my head I know who he is but I'm just like eh, I never found him that interesting um Back to Spirits of Vengeance. This is the other monthly book that was coming out. And we have uh, number 11 here. And this has Johnny Blaze, obviously, and Ghost Rider in it fighting a giant spider creature thing, Kiss of the Spider. Um, and there's like some D&D &D ads and stuff down there. Uh, yep. Uh, product of the 90s for sure uh, then we have here ghost rider and typhoid mary again and marvel comics presents teaming up i love that i think this is jay lee's artwork um it looks fantastic i always liked jay lee's stuff especially in his inhumans run with paul jenkins and then uh, in continuing after that a lot of his stuff is still great to this day i love this batman gotham knights covers too he did a really good job um so you know ghost rider typhoid mary again uh, against you know whatever this creature is and then now we have vengeance crossing over into the main book so he this is another thing they were pumping up Vengeance, and I kept wondering why, because when Ghost Rider and Dan Ketch first came out, they were putting him in a lot of stuff. You know, they wanted him in, you know, uh, you know, the Wolverine books or, you know, like crossover books with him and Punisher. They they put him everywhere. Fantastic Four. So Vengeance started popping up like crazy after the Carnival of Death storyline. Now he's in the main book just like a month and a half later. And I was wondering, I instantly noticed, I was like, I feel a similar pattern here. You know, what's going on? And, uh, and we're going to find out very soon. I think we're going to find out in this episode why they were pumping up vengeance uh, before issue 50 of ghost rider next up we have spirit of vengeance number 12 once again with the character vengeance on the cover and i think this has like glow in the dark features to it in the face and on those like rays shooting out of his eyes um yeah, this character, like I said, they were just going full force. We got him, like, since his appearance, his first appearance in issue 9 of Spirits of Vengeance number 9, I think it was, uh, or 10 maybe it was, I can't remember. But, like, once he appeared in the book, he was only not in it for one issue. Like, issue 11 had the spider thing, but I think even Vengeance had a cameo in that issue. So they were really just going full force with this guy, and which is fine. I ended up liking him as a character overall. Um, not, I, you know, obviously not as much as Dan or some of the other characters, but I thought, I was like, what are they going to do with him? They're, they're clearly pumping him up for something. They're setting him up. They're trying to build him as an anti-hero. It's, it's very Venomish in a way. Like if, if Ghost Rider was like the Spider-Man, obviously he's like the main character of his little universe uh, that he has over here, this little pocket universe of like, uh, you know, monster characters and stuff. He kind of became the main character. So you're like, okay, if that's like, you know, where Spider-Man became a main character and then he had like iron fist and luke cage and all these other like people that came in and helped him out from time to time if you look at ghost rider that way vengeance kind of felt like a venom they were like all right i mean he even has v-e-n in the beginning of his name um so th and they totally just went off the title they're just like oh spirits of vengeance all right we'll call it character vengeance um but uh you know his his storyline like you know i think he's like a cop and he you know becomes you know uh you know the spirit of vengeance or he becomes vengeance this new character but he's also um like this I don't know. He's like, they, they, he struggled with it. You know, he was like, all right, I got this mission. I got to kill Ghost Rider, but why do I got to kill Ghost Rider? And they already started bringing in those questions, you know? And I was like, all right, they're bringing that in pretty early for this guy. I mean, it makes sense. Cause you're like, Hey dude, Ghost Rider is the good guy. I know he looks like a monster and you're like assigned to kill him or whatever, destroy him. Uh, but he is the good guy here. And, and Vengeance starts to realize that as these issues, you know, pop up. So they start making him an anti-hero pretty quickly or, you know, or someone you kind of side with and, and kind of see his point of view on. And again, I was like, what are they, why are they doing that? Like, it's too soon for something like that, maybe. Uh, but no, no, it's not too soon. <laughs> or maybe it was, I don't know. I guess we can all debate that. Um, but I think they, they handled him as well as they could in the short amount of time that they had to set him up for what's to come. So uh, let's get there. Actually, we have Ghost Rider and Luke Cage, speaking of Luke Cage, teaming up here. Of course, they fight first and then they team up. Um, Ghost Rider and Cage, Marvel Comics Presents 132 and 133. Um, that's a McDaniel art cover, I think, or McNeil. Yeah, I think McNeil. Awesome. That's cool. Yeah, that's a neat cover. 
Um, then we have Midnight Suns Unlimited. So we have issue two here. And look how many issues came out in just the two months to issue three. Because I think this book came out every two months. So uh, yeah, July, August, September, October. Yeah, so it came out every two months roughly. And uh, and it would just be full of little short stories in there. And this one decided to focus on you know Morbius, Darkhold, and, uh, and the Night Stalkers. Uh, but then also there's a Ghost Rider story in here where he faces the Harvester. Um, and there's, uh, I, but not every issue of Midnight Suns Unlimited has Dan Ketch in it, but I still bought them all because why not? You know, I just wanted them all uh, just to have the whole collection. Uh, Shadow Riders number two featured Ghost Rider, Mayhem, and Mystech uh, Central. So this is like that um, that storyline, that book at the end of the last issue or last episode where we talked about it, it was like this weird crossover with Death Head. This is kind of part of that. It was like Marvel Comics UK. So they brought in like these UK writers and artists and, and stories and characters, and they decided to tell stories with them to try to see if they could boost those characters up in any way. It didn't really stick with a lot of people. I'll be honest with you. I don't remember a single thing that happens in here. I don't even remember Ghost Rider's appearance in this one or what he does in it. Um, so that's how little I remember of that book. Um, all right. Oh, and my, my purple light is shining here. Oh, there we go. So these are the black covers. This is what I was talking about uh, with Ghost Rider. We had this black variant that came out this week with Ghost Rider for number one. And uh, I wanted this cover because it reminded me of these covers, the Midnight Massacre. This was a five-part, I think, storyline. And it was crossing over, again, Night Stalker, some of these other books that were like, all right, Sales maybe are dipping a little bit, or maybe they had this plan all along. Chances are they probably did, uh, but they were like, all right, we got to do another crossover event, and we want to tie this stuff into Ghost Rider. So what they did was they got this, you know, this awesome black cover that just was really cool. But the neat thing about it, and there's, you know, Ghost Rider number 40 back there. The neat thing about these covers was the back, where it looks like a sealed letter. Um, and it has all the titles on it. So it's uh, Night Stalkers number 10, Ghost Rider number 40, Darkhold number 11, Morbius number 12, and Spirits of Vengeance number 13. And it's just like this letter. It's like an invitation to the end of the world, basically. <laughs> this Midnight Massacre that's going to happen uh, where these sacrifices are going to be made. And it's going to set up the next big Ghost Rider story. So, yeah, I thought that was cool. They did it for Night Stalkers number 10 there, um, Ghost Rider number 40, Darkhold number 11, I might even, uh, yeah, it says pages from the Book of Sins. Um, I might even have two copies of one of these. I can't remember. Uh, Morbius 12, or maybe I gave it away. Um, and then Spirits of Vengeance 13. Yeah, anything excess I try to give away because the boxes are getting so tight, like filling all the boxes with Ghost Rider books. It's getting very slim in there. I'm like, oh, I don't want to damage, uh, you know, the ones that are in good condition. Um, so, yeah, all right. So now that the Midnight Massacre ended, that sets up the next storyline, which we're going to get to here after uh, we go through some Marvel Comics Presents with Luke Cage and major victories in that issue. Um, another Cage crossover and a Black Widow backup storyline, which is great. Um, I like Black Widow. She's a great character. Um, I don't think she's always written well, but when she is, it's uh, usually, I mean, it's, it's, I think that's the same for any character, I guess. It's a kind of a generic statement to make because it's like, oh, when someone's written well, they're awesome. It's like, well, no duh, dude. Uh, so yeah, so, but I like Black Widow a lot. She's a great character. Um, Punisher here, uh, War Journal number 57. So there's a team up. You got Daredevil popped up in the issue, but you have Punisher and, the, uh, you know, Sp the Spirit of Vengeance himself, Ghost Rider here. And I like when these two meet, uh, you know, I think they're on similar paths, but there still is a line between them. And uh, it's funny that now that like, cause Donny Cates has, you know, every idea I feel like John Donny Cates has, I'm just like, he's just copying from the nineties, like cosmic ghost Rider. I'm like, okay. Well, there was a cosmic ghost Rider in the nineties in a guardians of the galaxy crossover or regarding guardians of the galaxy book um, where it was like, who's the ghost Rider of the year 3000 or whatever. Um, and I think Donny Cates had said, Oh, I, I don't remember that book. I found out about it after I created Go uh, cosmic ghost Rider. That could be true. But uh, at the same time, I feel like he's a kid of the nineties like me. And a lot of his ideas probably came from things he saw in the 90s. And he's, you know, kind of doing his spin on those ideas in his head. So uh, so when I see, like, this cover, I'm like, well, okay, well, there's the identity of Cosmic Ghost Rider right there. Um, you know, uh, it's Frank Castle as Ghost Rider. And then around this time is when that uh, that Guardians of the Galaxy issue came out. So, uh, so yeah, you know, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, maybe we're subliminally influenced more than we think we are. Um, 
Or maybe he's never seen those comics ever and great minds think alike. That could be it too. Uh, but it's just funny going through these old books and I'm just like, wow, that, hey, that's a Donny Cates thing. And that's a Donny Cates thing. <laughs> um, so, all right. So Ghost Rider Annual. So I didn't know there was two annuals. I found out there was a second one later and I think I have it. I don't know if it's in this year or next year's collection that we'll get to, but uh, these annuals are cool. I, you know, I always liked when the, the X-Men had annuals pump out all the time um, and, uh, and they were always fun. They had fun little stories in them. So the fact that they were given Ghost Rider one finally after like four years uh, now in, in existence he was finally getting his first annual and so uh, that was pretty cool in 1993 here so we have the 64 page annual where he's fighting this vampire dude and the cover is awesome the cover art is fantastic uh, then we have the second part of the war journal story punisher daredevil and uh and ghost rider all teaming up the triad of terror is the the name of this issue and uh, yeah that's a good one what a great iconic cover that's so fantastic I couldn't think of three weirder people to meet up. Although I did like when Wolverine, Punisher, and Ghost Rider met up. But uh, what was fun about that book was they had Dan Ketch stuff in it. And Dan was like, why am I hanging out with these two? And then the Ghost Rider's like, I love hanging out with these two. <laughs> so yeah, that, that was a fun book. Um, so here we have Road to Vengeance. So after the Midnight Massacre, now we have to set up the next event, right? So Road to Vengeance, The Missing Link is uh, this thing where they decided to do these neon, because neon started becoming big at this point in the 90s. It was really weird. There was neon stuff everywhere. Just look at, you know, the Joel Schumacher Batman movies. Uh, neon started to pop up in a lot of stuff. Very 90s, I feel like neon is. So, uh, and I think it's because I think of events like this and movies like the Joel Schumacher Batmans. It's like, oh yeah, those came out in the 90s around, you know, between 93 and 97 or 98 or whenever. So uh, like that five year, you know, span, I started to see a lot of neon popping up um, and glow sticks and th <laughs> things like that. That. So the Road to Vengeance Missing Link, this is part one of this crossover in Ghost Rider number 41, and then it crossed over into Spirits of Vengeance number 14, which was part two of the story, it had yellow chains on it. Uh, then we're going to skip here because we're going to get into more Marvel Comics Presents. Again, I put these in release order, uh, as close as I can remember them being in release order, and going off of like a couple lists I saw online. So I don't know how 100% accurate these are, but at least uh, they're, they're semi-accurate. Um, so we have Cage and Iron Fist and Ghost Rider teaming up in Marvel Comics Presents. Uh, then we also have another uh, Marvel Comics Presents here with uh, 137, and it has the Astonishing Ant-Man in it, right? Uh, yes, the Astonishing Ant-Man. Um, so then back to the Road to Vengeance. Um, and again, the title too, because I'm like, Road to Vengeance? So, so it had like a double meaning, because we're going to find out here soon, uh, you know, that it's not just, you know, a Road to Vengeance, meaning the word vengeance, but also maybe the character as well. So... Um, we have a uh, Death Watch, I think, comes back temporarily for this one because he died already. But I think this is like him being reborn or, or temporarily brought back as a spirit or something like that to fight Ghost Rider in these issues. Um, and then we have here on the cover, Vengeance once again picking up Dan Ketch, Ghost Rider, and uh, threatening to break his back like a Bane style. Um, but yeah, this one had the pink neon on it, uh, which is looks really good, like, you know, with the combination, the contrast there with all the dark colors in the background. Um, so yeah, and I bet you they had fun trying to figure out like, all right, what colors are we going to make in neon? They didn't go with just green or yellow. They changed it every cover, which I was like, wow, okay, you guys are really going all out with that one. Um, Gunrunner, <laughs> number one. Uh, this is, again, more of the Marvel UK stuff. This one came with four jean cards i don't know i don't think even it's even open out of the plastic inside i think it because there's a plastic you know seal inside that it's wrapped in like a poly bag um i don't think i've ever opened this after i bought it so uh i don't know what that book's about i don't know what it is i just know dan ketch was in it and i was like well i better add it to the collection and it was like 50 cents so it wasn't uh, didn't break my wallet uh then we have here ghost rider number uh 138 for marvel comics presents and 139 for marvel comics presents the Masters of Silence. I think that's like a solo Ghost Rider story with the hand in it. Um, I think that's what the, the book was. And you got my Fantastic Four box art back here, which is amazing. I love the Fantastic Four. All right, so we'll center that. Then we'll dive into this second half real quick. Uh, Midnight Suns number three. We got another big storyline here. This time Spider-Man makes an appearance, which is uh, awesome. Anytime Spider-Man and Ghost Rider are around each other, I really like it because he's not really... You know, like Spider-Man's not a supernatural character at all. You know, he's, he's purely science, uh, you know, and, and he's a kid you know, for the most part, a young man at this point in the comics, too. And uh, or maybe he's even getting like his mid 20s to late 20s, I think. So, yeah, he was a little bit older, um, but I always like seeing him around. I think him and Dan really 
kind of hit it off. I think he understood Dan on, on a personal level and the fa the responsibility Dan felt to his family and stuff. I, I feel like Peter Parker and Dan had a lot in common, but uh, then you have the contrast of Ghost Rider, who has nothing in common with Peter Parker's alter ego, which is Spider-Man, uh, who's like a jokey, you know, uh, slapsticky kind of guy who swings around and pokes fun at his villains to psychologically, you know, damage them while he fights them to make them mad so he can get the upper hand, whereas Ghost Rider just it purely scares the living crap out of you. <laughs> so I always like those two being in the same book together. So yeah, Midnight Suns number, uh, Old Limited number three, Gunrunner number two. Again, I don't know what happens in this, but Ghost Rider's in it, so I got it. Um, and I think we're nearing the, the finale of Road to Vengeance here with the next two issues. This is like a hot pink, a little different than the other pink that was on there. Um, but then I feel like they kind of ran out of colors and went back to this other pink. I think it was supposed to come out differently. It looks slightly shaded different, like a fuchsia kind of, it's slightly shaded a different pink than the first one, but it's uh, still not still not great. Uh, I mean, as far as like, it's not a, a completely separate color. Um, I guess they didn't want to do like a neon blue or anything like that for whatever reason, maybe because there's a lot of blue on this cover. But uh, it does, you know, this was a, the, the the gimmick that they were trying to do. They were like, oh, look at these covers. They got like glowing chains on them. And just like, all right, whatever. Just tell us a good story. And this one was pretty fun. Um, but it again, it's the road to vengeance. I think this is the conclusion of it, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe there's one more we'll find out, but I think that was the conclusion. Um, Ghost Riders presents number, or Marvel Comics presents Ghost Rider 140, another Iron Fist team up, uh, this time with Ghost Rider and Iron Fist actually teaming up together um, in both issue 140 and 141. And then 142 here is different. It brings in a character named Foreigner. I don't remember, not the band, <laughs> uh, not hot blooded here. Um, but uh, yeah, still, still. Um, pretty neat cover though this character looks interesting i don't know i don't remember this issue at all so i i can't comment really on it i think it's a standalone story though um morbius 15 so the ghost rider appeared in here um on a murdering rampage only ghost rider can stop so this is when morbius starts to lose it he's going nuts he's starting to bite people and ghost rider wants to come and save his friend you know uh, and pull him back from the brink which is uh yeah it's pretty good you got to tell those stories sometimes with uh, Morbius and and you can because it's it's easy he's a vampire so it's an easy story to tell really uh, Siege of Darkness so this is the big crossover this uh, this takes place over like fifteen or eighteen books or something like that so we're gonna try to speed through them but the main story of this is it's like everything that's been building up from Midnight Massacre those sacrifices what that set up um, then also like the the missing link storyline the road to vengeance was all building towards was this big event called Siege of Darkness which involves the Night Stalkers Doctor Strange you know Ghost Rider obviously Darkhold it involves all the characters set up in the Midnight Suns plus Doctor Strange and some other characters I think maybe I can't remember if Brother Voodoo shows up in this or not either but it brings in a lot of uh, characters to deal with this big threat and it also deals with a big sacrifice made at the end of the storyline so uh, we'll go through it real quick we have night stalkers and they kind of did these black covers where you can kind of see the silhouettes of the characters which i mean i think there was two versions i think there was like the the version you got at the comic store and then there was a version you can get at like grocery stores that actually showed the artwork i can't remember i wish i got the ones that showed the artwork because as cool as this is i mean it's like you can't really see blade very well and i want to see the artwork i mean someone worked really hard on drawing those so you kind of want to see them same with this one ghost rider number 44 i got the silhouette cover and you can barely you can see more of me in the background waving at you than you can the actual cover itself and that's mainly because my lighting i have to have all these lights on right now um so you can see the other covers when they're not looking like this. Uh, then we have Ghost Rider, Marvel Comics Presents 143. This one took me a while to track down because these these issues, I guess they did a small print run of them because Marvel Comics Presents started to like lose, like drop in sales around this time, I think, because I can't, I, it was hard finding some of these. I mean, most of these books, I, if I was missing them, they cost like a dollar, two dollars at the most to, to like, you know, replenish or buy to put to my collection. But these ones, these Marvel Comics Presents ones that are part of this storyline, they were like five, six bucks each. I think some one of them was 10 bucks. So yeah, there's that's it was tough getting some of these issues because uh, I was missing maybe like five of these Siege of Darkness ones and I think it ran me like forty bucks to get all five of them. So uh, yeah, it was uh, and I didn't even buy they weren't even in great condition. They were good condition but not great. Um, Darkhold number fifteen. So that's the next part and it's funny because eventually these it says really small like part three, part four and stuff. But they eventually get, they're wrong. <laughs> they're, one of them has a misprint on them. Uh, there's like one book that says part 11. And I think there's another book that says part 11 or part 13 or something like that. So yeah, they, they made some mistakes in, uh, when releasing these. There was a couple of 
uh, errors right on the covers too, which is a bummer. Um, Siege of Darkness, Morbius number 16. So he, you know, he was going to the brink and that was setting up this storyline and his place in it. So uh, again, you know, Dan Ketch trying to pull him back, trying to save him. Um, then we have Marvel Comics Presents Vengeance, number 144. And I think that's why this one was a little harder to find. Uh, although I think if you flip it over, it's a Ghost Rider book. So it might be, it might have both of them in it, I think. Uh, which, you know, let, you know what, let's find out. I think it does. Um, yeah, so there, Ghost Rider, number 144, and then Vengeance. And uh, I don't know why I have it on the Vengeance side. I think I do because... Uh, maybe that's just how it, it came when I bought it, because I, I bought this online on eBay, I think. So maybe that's why I have it on that side. But it also sets it up, because Vengeance starts having a bigger role in this storyline, because they're, obviously they're building him up for something big. Um, then you can kind of see Doctor Strange's face. Let me move this a little over. There you go. You can kind of see it a little bit better. I should have done that on the previous one. Sorry about that. Uh, Doctor Strange number 60, you know, crossover with this event. Spirits of Vengeance, number 17. You can kind of see Johnny Blaze there with uh, Ghost Rider and Vengeance on that side. And they're putting their hands together on the medallion that, that created Dan Ketch. So that's, there's a lot of answers there. These are the other covers I was talking about where you get to see the characters. Uh, Wildman, uh, Andrew Wildman drew this cover, which looks really great. It's Blade, Night Stalkers, number 15. Ghost Rider, number 45. You know, uh, Siege of Darkness crossover. I love these covers. Uh, that's uh, Garney, uh, Ron Garney, I think, drew that one. Um, then we have Ghost Rider number, or uh, Marvel Comics Presents Ghost Rider number 145. And again, I think the flip side has Vengeance on it. And they, they, there was another reason they were, you know, introducing Vengeance into Marvel Comics Presents because after Ghost Rider leaves, like when Marvel Comics Presents hits issue like 150 or something, Ghost Rider's no longer in it. And they decided to make Vengeance the character. And I think he stuck with the book on and off for like 20 issues or something like that. Or maybe not even that long. I think uh, maybe it was less than that. Um, but yeah, Marvel Comics Presents didn't go much longer after Ghost Rider left the book. Um, Dark Hold number 16 here. And Morbius the Living Vampire number 17. What a great cover. That's awesome. Um, Spirits of Vengeance. Or Marvel Comics presents Blaze. So this time they were like, all right, we gotta, we're in the middle of this crossover event. We gotta tell a Johnny Blaze story. So uh, there's that. And then again, on the flip side, I think there's either Doctor Strange is on the flip side or, or a Vengeance again. I think it was Doctor Strange was on the flip side of that one. And then here's Doctor Strange again with Siege of Darkness Part 15. This time they put it in big font, which I'm, <laughs> I don't know why they didn't do that on all the other ones. Cause look, look at that. It's like really, you have to really go in to see what it says. Uh, Spirit of Vengeance number 18, it looks like. Um, we have Ghost Rider, Johnny Blaze teaming up. And that is, I can't remember, that's not the end of that. Uh, that is not the end of that storyline. So this is Blaze. This came out right around the time. I think it's an aftermath story. So I think I made a, I put this in release order and not like con canonical order. So so this isn't like where the story takes place. But, uh, but this was still a fun little mini series. So I have issue one there. Um, but this is where Midnight Sun's Unlimited comes in and they end the whole Siege of Darkness storyline with issue four, which look at that cover. It's so freaking awesome. It's really well done with all the characters over here. And you have Vengeance, Johnny Blaze, Morbius, the new Doctor Strange who kind of looked Spawn-ish. He had like a mask and with teeth on it and stuff. It was kind of cool. And then you had, a, you know, you Blade there. So this is great. I mean, I hope these characters, I mean, I know Morbius won't. He's in the Sony universe, but I hope these other characters all get Marvel treatments. Like I, when they do Doctor Strange 2, I hope they introduce Blade or Ghost Rider. And when they do Blade, I hope, again, I hope Ghost Rider or Johnny Blaze or someone shows up in it. And I hope they build that side of the Marvel Universe into their own pot, because I will follow that. I will see every single one of those movies, no, no doubt. Like the other Marvel movies, Eternals and all that stuff, I'm not interested anymore. I'm like, hey, I had, I loved Captain America's my favorite. After seeing him and that story conclude, I'm like, all right, I'm good. I don't really need to see anymore because there's not a lot of characters drawing me in maybe, maybe spider-man but i'm not even really a big fan of the the mcu spider-man movies that much they're okay to me they're just they're just fine so maybe i'll see that new one when it comes out because i do want to see what happens to peter parker's storyline but i don't know for the most part i'm not on board with the mcu with some of the stuff they have coming out but blade i'll definitely see and doctor strange too i'll, I'll probably see too because um i'm interested to see what they do with that so uh, that was the conclusion of the story. Then we have the Legacy of Blood Blaze miniseries continuing with issue two. This is only a four issue story. So we'll get in, you know, we'll see some of those issues coming up here. Um, but we're nearing the end here. So boom, right there, Ghost Rider, the new Ghost Rider, number 46. At the end of the Siege of Darkness storyline, Dan Ketch, aka the Ghost Rider, sacrificed himself 
uh, to save everybody else. So there was there was a need for a big power play, a big save, and Dan is the one who decided to do it and and end his life. I think he was looking for an out as the Ghost Rider. He was becoming Ghost Rider more and more, and he was you know as Dan less and less. His personal life was through you know gone through hell and. Things were just not working out for him. And I think he was like, you know what? This this is what I want. I want to end, uh, but also save all my friends here and they can continue to fight then, you know, from here on forward should anything arise. But, you know, Dan thought he was sacrificing himself to save everybody and stop the final threat with Lilith and the Siege of Darkness and the whole storyline. He wanted to end it all. He thought he was going to be the end of it. Unfortunately, things like that never end. And so eventually he will come back. But in the meantime, while he was gone, vengeance became ghost rider so this is what i'm talking about they were building him up so now we have the new ghost rider who is vengeance who definitely is i mean besides the purple pants if i if i saw him walking up to me um yeah i would have crap my i would have probably had a bigger crap in my pants than i would if dan catch ghost rider walked up to me so yeah seeing him is awesome and his toys were selling really well at this time and and he was becoming kind of a, a fan favorite and they were kind of forcing him to be more of a fan favorite but i still i read this issue and i was like oh this is good but after even reading this first issue, I was like, I already missed Dan. Like, I, I want Dan back. Um, I was one of those kind of fans. I was like, no, I, I don't, I'm not accepting it. He's got to come back. And uh, apparently there was a lot of fans like that in Marvel Heard. So he comes back pretty soon, actually. Um, Blaze, Legacy of Blood, number three. He was once a Ghost Rider facing a challenge of his life. Will he become Ghost Rider again? Uh, we find out, obviously, he does not because uh, Vengeance decides, you know, and it's not the same Ghost Rider. It's not the same spirit that was inhabiting Johnny Blaze that was inhabiting uh, Dan Ketch, as we learned in that storyline. Uh, spirit of Vengeance, number 19, The Lord of the Vampires returns, and Johnny Blaze is now solo in that book uh, without a Ghost Rider. Um, then we have number 47 of Ghost Rider here, and we have uh, Vengeance showing up and fighting evil in New York City. And then the final, the conclusion of the Blaze Legacy of Blood mis uh, miniseries, the final legacy. Families are, uh, families, what does that say? Families are supposed to be forever. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. And uh, yeah, this was a fun little personal story. Not fun. I mean, like, obviously it, it kind of ends in tragedy in a way, but that's what these characters are. They're, they're the Winchester brothers, right? But like 1.0 before the Winchesters came up around. Um, and even before that, it was like the Hardy Boys. So it's like, it's, it's fun. Like, things can't always work out for these guys and these characters uh so it always gets really intense and then we have uh number 20 here ghost rider spirits of vengeance um it just says ghost rider blaze but uh mostly the book was about johnny blaze at this point then we have of course the vengeance is in the book and they're like all right we, we need him to team up with people so they brought spider-man in pretty quick to to team up with the new ghost rider in issue 48. um then we have spirits of vengeance number uh, uh 21 and it says you're invited to a family reunion. I, I can't remember if that's Sabretooth or not. I know it looks like him on the cover, but I can't remember if it's him or, or if they brought in another character or if it's something else. Um, I, I'm blanking. Uh, so maybe one of you guys can tell me down below. Um, but anyway, this book is about to end too because nobody wants to read a solo uh, Johnny Blaze story. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That's my little dig at Johnny Blaze fans. Um, but, uh, but I think they were, that book was running out of momentum anyway after the crossover. So I think they were just like, all right, let's just whittle it down to one. Um, Marvel. So someone told me that Dan Ketch is in this issue somewhere. I have yet to find him. I looked through this book and maybe if one of you guys know which page he's on or what panel he's on, if he's drawn in there, maybe Alex Ross put him in there and, and I didn't know or didn't see it. Um, you let me know, but I don't remember seeing him at all in this issue. So I, I, but I still have it in the collection just in case. Also, it retells the death of Gwen Stacy. So, you know, that was a good enough reason for me to get it too, but still, I, I haven't seen Dan Ketch in that issue. And then finally, we have here Forge to Fight, Midnight Suns Unlimited, number five. And that's going to end the 1993 to 1994 collection, because this is now May of 1994, or April of 1994. And we'll begin the next episode with May of 1994, and we'll go to 1995, April. And you'll see there's a lot less books. Uh, this was the biggest, I think this one and the last one were the two biggest years of Ghost Rider. But now we're going to wind down. He's not going to be in many crossovers anymore. Um, uh, Howard Mackey, the writer on it, starts you know wrapping up his storyline. So uh, we're going to go over that in the next episode for sure. So that's it for this episode. Let me know what you think of my collection. Like I said, I don't know if I have every single appearance of Dan Ketch, but I have most of them. I'm pretty sure I have like 99%. There's a couple issues that came out. I think maybe just one or two in this year 
that uh, had Dan in it, and I just felt like, eh, I flipped through it, and I was like, it's not really, really worth it. Doesn't tell me anything new about the character. Doesn't really do anything interesting with them. So I think maybe I might be missing one or two from this year or the previous year. Uh, but for the most part, I think I got everything. And then moving forward, the collection get got harder to collect because uh, you know after issue like sixty or so, um, the book started printing less and less. And then by the time we got to issue seventy. The book was really underselling and underperforming. Howard Mackey had left the book. Even the new writer who came in, I think his name was Ivan. Uh, he's he's great. We'll get to that stuff. Um, I still liked his run for the most part. I thought it was good. It was different. Um, the artwork was great. It introduced me a lot, a lot of artists like Koi Fam and stuff. There's like a lot of people came in that uh, had a different style, and they really tried to make a different approach to Dan Ketch storytelling. Um, so I, I commend them for that. Uh, but unfortunately, it didn't really catch on, and I think the flame had started to die out. Unfortunately, after issue seventy. Um, after Howard Mackey left right before that and the Crossroads storyline. Like, we're going to get in, into all that stuff. Uh, but you'll see the next few episodes will be shorter. Or or maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll have more to say about them. Uh, but there'll be less comics to go through in the collection uh, each year as we go, as we progress for the next couple years. And you'll see. And it, it's kind of heartbreaking because I love this character so much. And I remember going to the store and being broke. I would go to my grandparents on the summer and work my butt off and, you know, and make money and, you know, mow lawns and everything like that and then help clean up uh, just so I could pick up every issue of Ghost Rider that he was you know that he was in um that dan ketch was in or and i was also collecting x-men at the time so it was like i was really like grinding as a kid working hard to uh, to get all these comics and uh you know <laughs> working harder than probably um a lot of kids are used to these days you know anyway because i know a lot of kids have access to a lot more fun things uh than i had even growing up but i still had video games i still had comic books and you know i still had a lot of stuff i was pretty spoiled uh, even even working for the stuff was a good feeling um because i would still wrap that up and say i was spoiled because grandparents and my mom and stuff were still in a position to reward me with something for doing that kind of work um so definitely you know not complaining at all uh, i grew up with some you know some great stuff and and great comics to read and uh it broke my heart though seeing that you know my say like the books were coming out less and less and i couldn't understand and i remember when we moved from florida to south carolina I was noticing I was like we're we're in a new state and uh, at first I could only get one comic in the mail so I was it was Spider-Man uh, but then once we found a comic store like a year later um, I started going in there and picking up the Ghost Rider issues I was missing and I was broken hearted to find out like in the late 90s uh, that a lot of them were you know that the book was underselling and there weren't copies to find uh, because they didn't order that many and comic stores stopped ordering them and, and especially stores like in South Carolina where I was in high school and stuff so it was a bummer so yeah you'll see like my my energy might drop a little as we as we go over the next couple episodes but for now at least we had a lot to talk about in this one this was a long episode uh, so let me know what you think of the collection do you have any favorite issues in this one have you read them and if you want any in-depth breakdowns of these like I said check out the inner demons podcast I'll put a link to them down in the description box below they've gone over a lot of these issues uh, these issues already so make sure you listen to the show go back and listen to older episodes and support those guys because they will give you the lowdown on all these books and they're they do a really good job at it so please support them as well and uh, share your collection with me which comic character do you love who have you always wanted to make a collection of like this, like the Dan Ketch run that I have? Like, do you have a character out there that you love so much that you'd like to have every issue of? I'd love to hear your thoughts down below, and we'll continue our conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you all in hell. Peace.